Now, we're starting with The Brink, a much praised documentary about Steve Bannon, who was the CEO of Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. It focuses on the period after Donald Trump fired him. Now, documentary maker Alison Clayman followed him around for about a year in the lead up to the US midterm elections. Some people, Lisa, are going to say that this film is old news. Oh, hardly. I wish we would spend more time examining the steps that led us to the present moment. I don't know how much of the director's frank all access footage ended up on the cutting room floor. But uh, what's in this movie is very damning stuff. Trump is, of course, a thin skinned, incurious narcissist. Bannon is smart, very smart. But obviously, he also thrives on attention, lots of it. Steve Bannon is a name we should all be familiar with, like uh, Ebola or bubonic plague, you know, the sort of thing that spreads to formerly healthy people. Bannon comes out and says that without him as the CEO of his campaign, Trump would not have won. One, that his actions will still be resonating 30 years from now, and that Trump is a transitional figure. Well, yeah, the transition from civility to boorishness and uh, from respecting shared reality to fake news. OK, well, let's take a look at how Bannon spins comments. George Soros. I mean, that is widely accepted as an anti-Semitic trope. The, use, the suggestion that George Soros is somehow all-controlling, all that he's influencing Europe, everybody knows. I totally that disagree with that. George Soros is the, sim is the biggest... It's not something to disagree with because it is an anti-Semitic trope. Well, what? No, George, that's, just because you stated doesn't mean it's the true. The idea that George, no, Soros, George Soros is controlling the world is this massive... I didn't say controlling the world. I said he's the, he's the financier and back of the NGO. So you're unaware that many people will read that as being a nod and a wink toward anti-Semitism? Absolutely not. I don't see that as all. So, Lisa, do we really have Bannon to thank for um, convincing Trump to communicate via Twitter? Because I thought it was his first wife, Ivana, who gave him the idea. Ah, well, I won't be sending a thank you note to either of them. Uh, there's now a great deal of research uh, that points to the fact that social media use makes most people way more jittery and indignant than they otherwise would be. I suspect this is not a desirable quality in a world leader. He says that one thing Trump has taught us is that there is no such thing as bad media. Bannon says, I consider propaganda to be positive. Whatever nationalist movements uh, look viable, he wants to help. This is a mouthful, but Peter Bradshaw in The Guardian wrote, quote, what emerges from Clayman's film is how very important Brexit Britain is as a self-vivisecting research animal in Bannon's experimental thinking. So why do you think so many people take Bannon seriously then? Ah, well, you know, not unlike Jean-Marie Le Pen for decades here in France, Steve Bannon's ideas are abhorrent, but he presents them so smoothly that you're almost ready to say, sign me up, even if everything he say he says runs counter to what you actually believe. We see Bannon hosting Marine Le Pen's lieutenants in the film, by the way. I left the screening shaken up, and that lasted for a few days. Wow. Okay.